you know, what everybody wants to figure out is what was his motive. That was our primary thing. It was just unbelievable to me that we could have been three months out of the shooting and not know why this guy did what he did. And here we are now about 10 months out and people are still wondering why did he do this and what's behind it. So you've got a police report that's come out, the final police report. They say that it was a single shooter. Uh, they don't know what his motive was. You have the FBI also saying a single shooter. FBI though does say that they think they are gonna determine his motive and we're gonna know about it before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So we're only about four or five days from a one year anniversary of this, of this massacre. Uh, you also said you heard that there was some security or some law enforcement in the, in the hotel close to the shooter at the time. This is not as public knowledge as it should be because when the timelines first came out, they were basically wrong. And Sheriff Lombardo had them wrong and it was very embarrassing for them and he had to correct them. And then people were asking for various information. They wanted the reports, they wanted the body cam, they wanted to know really what happened. He stalled putting that information out. The media had to go to the courts to get that information out. Finally, the court said, Lombardo, you have to release this. He slow plays the release, but finally, after his election, we learned for the first time that there was two Las Vegas police officers on the 31st floor listening to shooting one floor above for at least four minutes. So they were already in the mandolin. Why didn't they go? He, the officer flat out says that he froze. Officer Varson says that he froze. Uh, sorry, Officer Hendricks said that he froze. Varson was a trainee that was with him, but he puts right in his report that he froze. And it, it, it's sad to see. You can see it with the body cam. You see exactly what happens. I would have frozen that situation, but now I'm not a Vegas police officer who's taken an oath to protect and so defend. So we've been here the better part of a week, maybe five or six days, and we keep hearing this more than one shooter, multiple shooters, reports of multiple shooters, some audio tape of 911 calls, multiple shooters. What do you know? What, what have you heard? Everyone I've spoken to that was at the concert, and we've spoken to a lot of people that are at the concert, they all say multiple shooters. Why? What? what? Well, the theory would be that there's shots echoing. That, first of all, he fired so many rounds in such a short period 1, of time. 1,100 rounds in, in, in a 10 minute period. Yeah. So I think people's first reaction is this sounds like a lot. It's echoing off buildings, so that's sounding like a number of things. Nobody, dawn, it didn't dawn on anybody that somebody could be up there doing this. Everyone I spoke to that was there thought the shots were coming from ground Let's level. Let's do the math right here. About a 10 minute shooting spree, right? 1,100 rounds, you're talking 110 rounds per minute. That's almost one and a half, that's almost two shots per second. And what gun fires two shots per second for 10 minutes straight without loading? I mean, if you, if you encompass loading time, you could be two or three shots per second. Is that possible? Uh, well, the experts say that they think that it is, but uh, you know, I think that's still yet to be borne out. Uh, we do know that he had 22 rifles in the room, all set up with the bump stock, so he was ready to go. So when this one's done, he's ready to go to the next one. A lot of people will question, what is he doing with 22 rifles in the room? A lone shooter, shooter with 22 rifles? The theory would be, though, he wanted to be ready. If any of those jammed, he had the next one and the next one. The other little theory that I would put out there is he wanted to go out in what I call an orgasm of violence. That's what this was. And this guy was a sick, sick individual in many different Tell ways. Tell us about his history that gives you that impression. Child pornography is found on his computer. We don't know what that was doing there. We don't know what that's all about. Was he trafficking in child pornography? Was he consuming it himself? The brother who I exclusively interviewed also was found with child pornography on his computer in Los Angeles and faced charges for that. So there's something weird going on there. If you look at the father situation, FBI's most wanted list, no the shooter's psychopath. father. Shooter's the father. shooter's father, he left the family when they were all young, so they're raised without a father. Uh, the brother tells a story about when he got to meet the father for the first time when he was 20 years old. Okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you're, you're ascribing to the single shooter theory, yes. even though 1,100 rounds in 10 minutes, okay. Was, was Mandalay Bay negligent allowing one guy to bring 22 firearms up there, more than 2,000 rounds I think he had ready to go? Look, I don't like the idea of holding anybody responsible for but, but the piece of you know what who did this, okay? But um, under the court of law and liability and, and negligence and so on, I'm gonna say I think the answer is yes, that they were negligent. And the reason is we're looking from where he was to this location and Mandalay Bay was, yeah. Oh, tell me about that. They, they knew this concert was going on because? MGM Grand was the co-promoter of this along with Live Nation. So MGM owns Mandalay Bay. They know 20,000 people are gonna be across the street from their properties, mm -hmm. Luxor and Mandalay Bay. What additional security did you put in place knowing or thinking about this? They had security here, 
But what about the security there? I think we're going to learn that there was no additional security there.